Hello and welcome. You're watching FII. I am Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. Now on this program, we discuss a lot of matters about health, mental health issues that should matter to you. What's your gut health looking like? Food is something that we've been looking at for a very long time. So we thought we'll bring you in different episodes, different kinds of food and how to approach food, how to look at it as well. So today we look at frozen foods, the good, the bad, the ugly of it. There are some upsides, there are some downsides as well. Not all packaged food is really bad for you. So we'll discuss that over this explainer. Let's get started. Let's discuss the upside of frozen food first. And that to start with the very, the very convenient one, it is quite convenient. You open a freezer, you get your favorite food and you cook it and it's done, right? Frozen food can also save a lot of time. A blessing for workaholics. Frozen food has long durability also. It may be saved for months, may prevent the spread of bacteria, not vulnerable to unwanted microorganisms as well. And frozen food, it reduces food wastage, longer du uh, durability, aids uh, reduced food wastage and a lot of fresh food ends up in our garbage, remember, uh, that rather than just being on our plates. It also helps restaurants make their process more efficient, pre-cooked food, shorter waiting time as well. Flexible meal plans, spontaneous food choices, all of that is happening in our lives today because of frozen food. We all knew this by now, we've all been eating it because of that. But did you know the downsides of frozen food? It does not taste as good as fresh food. I'm sure you've noticed that, witnessed it. There is limited variety. There is the cooling chain problem as well. So health issues, power outages and other issues. That means that there might be a time when the food that you're having, especially if it's seafood that is frozen, if there has been shortage in power in the meanwhile, it might go bad, right? Texture may be altered when the food is frozen. Some frozen dishes actually contain preservatives. Preservatives help food last longer, but the regular intake of these preservatives may cause serious health issues as well. Opt for foods that don't really contain too many preservatives and that's often advised. Some food may lose precious nutrients and vitamins and that's really the heart of the entire debate on the other side over here. Now, most frozen food contains far fewer vitamins than fresh food. An incorrect freezer temperature may be also a problem and food may get bad after a rather short period if it is not exactly frozen at the right temperature. Then another downside is something called a freezer burn. I'm not sure if you knew that name but I'm sure you've experienced it. This is a, a stage of food where the moisture loss happens. There is an ice crystal that is formed right on top of the top layer, especially with meat, etc., and evaporating from the surface area of the product. Patchy, unpleasant taste, all of that is what comes with as a downside to frozen food. But then we looked at, okay, what is the best way to eat food? And without a doubt, it is eating what is available locally to you, right? Embracing local stuff. Vocal for local actually stands for food as well. The quality is much, much higher for food when it is procured locally. It tastes better. There is better freshness. It, is, it has lesser shelf life, but the quality issues are not there at all. There is no added chemicals and aimed at transit as well. It's more nutritious. Ripe fruits, veggies contain the most nutrients and eating locally means that you'll be eating in season. The natural cycle of the produce is designed to suit your gut health as well and really can't talk enough about that one. Local food is also great for environment, lesser food transportation, lesser carbon footprint and more likely to be organic as well. Local food markets, consumers have questions on direct procurement, purchaser, interaction, community standards, unlike the supermarket interaction, which is less purchases as well. So all of that really contributing and telling us that procuring what's in season, what's around you, what's available locally is the best thing. But what do people like us in the national capital do? There is no farming happening around. There is nothing local per se. We get mostly from our neighboring states. And mostly we get everything round the ear. 
I have been faced with this question a lot of times and I'm sure so have you. So we looked at what exactly is the nutrition quotient of the food that you eat. Or it's called the nutrition density. It's important to understand that when you're picking up an item to consume. Now, what is that? Let's just define that for you. Nutrient density is the amount of healthful nutrient in ratio to the calorie content on the food that you're having. The food that has high nutrient density, such as fruits, vegetables, has higher nutrients and fewer calories. The food that has low nutrient density, that is soda, candy, um, all the stuff that you pick out of a packet or stuff that you're just picking out of a vending machine, all of them have very, very few uh, nutrients, but a lot of calorie. But going back to processed food for a minute, a question is that, is all processed food really unhealthy? The answer is no, not all processed food is unhealthy. Some foods are minimally processed for the purpose of preservation. For example, it may change the nutrient content of the food as well, but not entirely. Fruits and vegetables and meats are frozen to preserve their nutrient content and keep them fresh for longer hours. How they do it is the question. Low fat milk, clean and milled whole grains, seeds, pressed oils, frozen veggies all have undergone some kind of processing, yet they are healthy. Milk, flour, juices which are fortified or canned, fruits packed in natural juice or water may not be considered healthy because they have more amount of preservatives in it. However, highly processed foods, also known as ultra, ultra processed foods, may harm your health as well. Many nutrients can be lost or removed. For example, uh, peeled fruits, they remove the fiber and antioxidants levels present in them. Absolutely, dehydration may lead to loss of certain water solubles, vitamins and minerals as well. And further, some processed food have a high amount of salt, sugar, fat added to them to increase the shelf life and improve flavor not healthy for you one may not be able to control the addition of these extra additives however one can control purchasing such products while going grocery shopping but it's not always easy to determine what's good and what's not good for you so on the program having understood that i've got for you guests who will help us decode Joining us is Shweta Khandelwal, back with us on FII. Very happy to have you, Dr. Shweta. Sri Devi Rupana Singh is with us, a doctor, and she's a director at Central Food Technology Research Institute. Very um, thankful to have you uh, with us, uh, ma'am. And also joining us is Dr. Anupam Sibal. He's a group medical director at Apollo Hospital Groups. All right, Shweta, let me begin with you. Vocal, f you know, for local is something that should be actually be applied and should come in food. But it is so difficult, and I say this as somebody who lives in NCR, that you go out grocery shopping to pick out stuff and know just the basic information is not there. Could you give us some cues on how to people who don't have an option to go to a mandi, who don't have an option but have to land up at, a, at an air-conditioned mall to even pick up their basic groceries, some tips for them on how to pick up food? So uh, thank you for the question, Sonal. The first response to that is that uh, I'm very glad that you have made the connection between uh, you know, foods and climate change, foods and environment, foods and agriculture. Usually food is only seen as calorie, and I'm glad that you broadened the perspective here. So with that, the two or three things which I think uh, for people like you and me who, who are unfortunately uh, slaves to this modern day, uh, you know, sort of drudgery of, mm. of work and managing households. Uh, it's important, guys, to remember that frozen foods should not be seen as devil. Like they are, they are not the devil here. But the point is, which uh, Sonal made in her opening statement, that food which is fresh cannot be compared to anything. Freezing will not actually make it better or any other form of of preservation here. We are not talking about processing, but preservation. So whether it's canning, whether it's uh, uh, you know fruits freezing, these mm. things decrease the nutrient content. They are not going to up it. Number one. Number two, they are also going to. You have to remember that these things are to be understood how to do right. Otherwise, you will have a problem because sometimes commercially 
done things have a way and i'm sure uh, dr shri devi will explain that there is blanching there is uh, enzyme inactivation and so on and so forth which ensures the quality of the product is maintained but we at home we pick up a bag of uh, you know mutter or peas and just freeze it and we think we are good to go that is not the best way uh, there are conditions like you mentioned temperature of the freezer mm-hmm. and so on and so forth mm-hmm. so for us to choose even all the supermarkets sonal today have a section on fresh fruits and vegetables mm. so please try and approach that before going to the frozen section and also right. remember the frozen section market in india particularly i'm talking here in our supermarkets is largely flawed underutilized and it's full of hfss foods the high fat sugar and salty food mm. so my personal opinion is not to catch that bag of french fries by x company but cut a slice of you know take a potato Ten slices and buy it to your son or daughter and give it. That's still okay. Then going for that. Coding on these packets that one can watch out for. I'm just trying to educate our viewers here. Absolutely. So there is a nutrition labeling, which is uh, a part which we've done in uh, several shows about. Hmm. But that nutrient labeling at the back, you must be sure that the added sugar content, for example, salt content, for example. corn starch or the other kind of uh, preservatives for example on on this uh, uh, back side of your uh, you know uh, hmm. packaging is actually a warning sign for you to see if hmm. but i tell you for normal people if it comes in double digits be wary of it it's a very normal way of saying hmm. that if your added sugar your salt is coming in double double digits be hmm. a little it's not the best yeah, way but that will uh, differ from packaging right like packets, people who packets, buy yes. big packets they will have to look at it differently and i have always been thinking about this there needs to be a nutrient ranking perhaps in the country that should come out as a policy every food that you pick up should have a ranking on how good bad ugly this is for your health and people should then be taking informed choices this is not this a banning is like, everything out there yeah. there should everything should be available but I have always felt that there should perhaps be a ranking of that sort but you know I'm going to go back to how people freeze food at home and I want Dr Shri Devi to sort of weigh in at that point Dr Shri Devi for people like us and this is a personal question every time and I'm sure this reflects and will find a chord with everybody who stays away from home every time your parents come in especially your moms come in they make your favorite food and before they leave they freeze a big chunk and they leave it so that even when they are gone you can get a scoop out and get a taste of home is that good bad ugly for health i'm holding my heart and waiting to hear the answer yeah well, thank you for this opportunity uh, when we talk about frozen food and look at the market it is a 300 billion dollar market it is a huge market uh, the processors in the commercial front do know how to freeze the food they do know how to uh, transport it also to the market till it reaches the consumer hmm. when you're talking about the domestic freezing of food unfortunately not too many people do it the right way hmm. uh the on the right side of uh, freezing food is that we usually uh, pick it up when it is mature enough so it is having all the nutrients in the optimum levels and mm. if it is immediately frozen definitely there will be retention of nutrients i see what during uh, uh, the freezing is that ice crystals form Hmm. and during the thawing process before cooking they usually rupture the cell structure and because of this there will be drip loss and that is when a lot of vitamins especially water soluble vitamins could be lost ascorbic acid would be lost but it is nearest to the natural you can expect as compared to any other kind of processing now how do the commercial processing happen is that they do blanching as was mm. said earlier mm. during the blanching the air that is there is removed and therefore the food will sit properly into the container one mm. thing second is enzymatic activity is reduced mm. you have certain enzymes which will give browning which will uh, lead to color changes which you are not at all sensibly acceptable to the consumer mm. so you to inactivate this and generally frozen food is actually chopped up into smaller pieces therefore to some extent there is a destruction of the cell structure hmm. and the enzyme can come in contact with the substrate i understand therefore, that 
So, do, but doc, but doc, then what about cooked food that is frozen in freezers? Yeah. So uh, there, you are not really looking at the time temperature relationship, hmm. nor the container size. So you are randomly going to be freezing larger portions or smaller portions. You are going to be heating it for a longer time, uh, hmm. lesser time, which hmm. means it is not optimal. So you are doing this hmm. processing. One is enzymatic, like I said, the chemical mm. and metabolic reactions that are mm. happening in these living structures of the cell of the food. And second is the microbial spoilage. So you are inactivating the microorganisms to some extent. Hmm. Now, this does not happen when you are doing it domestically to the optimum level. So your okay. shelf life will be hmm. not extended to the possible. And another problem is if there are power outages, Hmm. it could start spoiling immediately and if it is not wrapped properly there could be freezer burns like you yourself said hmm. in the opening statement hmm. so all of this is not really advisable at the domestic level hmm. but suppose you have certain seasonal kind of produce like maybe uh, green peas for example hmm. you can shell them and you could uh, freeze those they would be safer and uh, please remember that any freezing activity is based on the water activity of the food, what we call, which means that you are actually freezing the water and thereby concentrating the other solutes that are there in the food, which will then not allow the bacteria to grow. So it is All right. There is a lot of information to take in and very, very valuable. I think it's a good time to take a pause, get into a break. When we come back, I know Dr. Sibyl is also waiting very patiently. We'll go to him as well. You're watching FII, frozen food. Should you have it? We'll tell you on the other side. Welcome back. We're discussing the good, bad, ugly of frozen food on FII. And let's go to Dr. Anupam Sibyl. Now, Dr. Sibyl, these days you get everything in a frozen packet from momos to murmuras to anything. You can really think about the world we sitting in India here in the national capital and eating what people in Thailand or wherever in the world you really want could be getting it. Could you tell us what exactly, why is eating local so important and how does your gut respond to it? Uh, good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure. Good evening. and ugly, really appropriately worded. Uh, I just wanted to make two high-level points before I sort of specifically answer your question. Uh, the first is I want to remind everyone, and I'm a pediatrician, so I, I want to uh, mark this to the attention of parents, is what uh, Lucretius, the Roman author, had said in the first century BC, what is one man's food is another man's poison. And Ludwig uh, Feuerbach in Germany, a German philosopher, had said, we are what we eat. So every time we make these decisions, we should think about these. And I know that, you know, we are very enamored of uh, taste. And we are very enamored of, you know, what is it that someone else is having in another part of the world? Why can't I get access to that? Hmm. But what we have to realize is that nature has its own way. The reason why we are seasonal foods is because vegetables and fruit grow in a particular season because it's best for them to grow in that particular season. And I know children who want cherries from South Africa and when they finish, they want cherries from, from America and Canada. And mm. then, of course, it's time for cherries no, the from frozen India. berries but is a different totally business altogether. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, because, you know, you have to realize we, we mm. talked about the nutritive value. We talked about energy. We talked about calories. We talked about vegetables. We talked about, uh, you know, salts. We talked about uh, all the the ingredients that you need to make a, a particular food uh, group nutritious right, isn't right. present at the level that it is when it's taken naturally. I'm not saying that, you know, uh, you should be so, so dogmatic about not having anything frozen. And, and oh, three days oh. you talked about peas and of course the rajma that your mom leaves is, is fine. But the question, this obsession that a lot of people have is, you know, I want this because it comes, it's exotic and it comes mm. from here and it comes from there. Mm. And so when you get into a mall, and even if it's air, air conditioned, there is always fresh fruit mm. and vegetables available. And that's where you need to head to rather than look at frozen food. Okay. Let us also okay. acknowledge the fact that the labeling is not as stringent as we experts would like it to be. And 
in the absence of that sometimes you don't always get the right information and also mm. the level of awareness about what is it that you should check isn't quite there mm. we see that all the time with food allergy parents say no 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 but my child's on a gluten free diet and you sit with them and you know there are 10 things you uncover uh, because of lack of uh, knowledge so i think uh, there is an opportunity for us while we educate the public at large we strengthen our our uh, mm. labeling is to get back that focus on nature to be one with nature nature right. is what decided what is best for you let's adhere to that mm. yes an occasional digression is fine mm. you know an occasional craving is fine but this obsession of trying to get things from outside because they're exotic and they're more expensive right. so they must be right. better is totally wrong yeah i am completely out of time and so sad we must come back to this topic actually this is so interesting thank you all this has been a very very educational program for me and for our viewers i'm hoping and two quick takeaways really one that not all frozen food is bad we are not here to demean that uh, also i think a lot of people are wanting to eat better and they just don't know how to pick the right products that's something we need to work on as a country and third you are what you eat so get going there guys bye for now